The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Wednesday morning. We got markets slightly in the green, a little bit of mixed action. S&Ps right now up by 16 points, trading at 6,023. You see the slide last night at about 6.45 p.m. The president-elect is out there tweeting. He's on Truth Social. We'll call it a tweet nonetheless. And he's talking tariffs and the market drives lower. And we get, basically get back what we had last night in terms of the drive lower by 40 points and we get it all back by the morning we're trading right now right where we were before that drop off we'll get into it in a moment nasdaq 100 pretty similar price action you drive lower last night we get it back right now we're positive by 80 points or about four tenths percent dow a little bit of a different story now we get some numbers out there for earnings nonetheless you get the dow negative by 115 points right now or two tenths percent you got the russell right now negative by eight points or three tenths percent how about bitcoin you talk about hitting a round number, 100,000 and 170. And just like that, we're back to 91,000. You're off by $3,000 on Bitcoin. MicroStrategy, trading at 382 right now, down from 403. We'll talk about MicroStrategy. They're out there buying more Bitcoin. Record hauls this month. You got crude. We hit a low last night of almost 68.50. We're trading right now at 69.35. Quite the drop off yesterday for crude. And yeah, now let's get to the main event of yields, the dollar, which all ties into gold, of course. The 10 year right now. Pushing about 4.3. Let's see where we are exactly. 4.296. So 4.3, the yield on the 10 year right now. You jump over to the dollar and you see the move that we had initially on that tariff tweet. You were up to 107.50. We were down to 106.50, right? You talk about a move, and now we're right back to where we were yesterday afternoon in the dollar at about 106.93 on the dollar. And you jump over to gold, gold contract, 26.53 right now. You see the sell-off we had yesterday? We put it back to a 15-minute. And, yeah, you talk about a drop-off, man. You're talking about $100 from where we were Sunday night to where we were at the end of the day Monday. We're back right now to $26.53. And let's jump over to it. So we're talking about China, additional 10% tariffs, and Mexico. Excuse me. Trump said he would impose an additional 10% tariffs on China and 25% tariffs on Mexico and Canada. Now, what's remarkable here, folks? He accused China of failing to follow through on promises to institute the death penalty for drug traffickers. Whew. Drugs are pouring into our country, mostly through Mexico at levels never seen before. We'll see where we go. It's a wild new frontier. Until such time as they stop, we'll be charging China an additional 10% tariffs above any additional tariffs on all their many products coming into the U.S. In another post, he vowed to hit Mexico and Canada with 25% tariffs on all products, saying he would sign an executive order on day one. As everyone is aware, thousands of people are pouring through Mexico and Canada, bringing crime and drugs at levels never seen before. That would be debatable, but he likes to say everyone's aware before he says anything. This tariff will remain in effect until such time as drugs, in particular fentanyl, and this one's real, man. The fentanyl deal going on right now in this country is tragic, and that's putting it lightly. And all illegal aliens stop the invasion of this country. Well, we know that immigration is a hot point, and it needs to be dealt with. Um, and he's merging a lot there. But nonetheless, you're getting the first dose of a little bit of reality versus the rhetoric of the campaign trail. And the market shakes it off a bit, right? I mean, you look at where we are. 
they shake it off right now with the S and P's basically sitting almost at all time highs. And meanwhile, you got yields right now sitting at 4.3, right where we were yesterday at this time. And you got the dollar right where we were as well. So no huge reaction. Yes, we got a reaction out of the gate. You give it back. You had the dollar initially spike higher on that tariff news. We give it back. We're trading right now at 106.94. And yeah, we get to see where we go from there. Over in Europe right now, you got Europe in the negative. You got the DAX right now down by three tenths percent. FTSE down by about two tenths percent. CAC roll down by two tenths percent as well. And Asia a little bit mixed. You got the Nikkei down eight tenths percent. Hang Seng flat. Shanghai down by about one tenth percent. All right. As far as our equities, we jump around, and as I mentioned, it is earnings season, and on the retailers. Abercrombie and Finch, Finch, Fitch, Abercrombie and Fitch, I said Finch, right? Uh, trading higher, the news out there, strong holiday quarter as growth run continues is how they put it. Yeah, and check out this chart before we go. How about that one, right? We'll put it on a weekly. Man, you talk about a run up from 20 bucks to 200 over the course of the year. We're consolidating between about 140 and 150 right now. We're going to open at 161 for Abercrombie and Fitch. And yeah, the numbers, 250 versus 239 revenue. They beat just above as well, 1.21 billion versus 1.19. For the important holiday quarter, they're expecting sales growth of 5 to 7% ahead of the 4.8 the market was looking for for the full year. The company is expecting sales to rise between 14 and 15%, higher than the 12 to 13. And the new outlook, outlook is higher than the 12.1% that analysts were looking for. 14 to 15% growth. They were looking for 12.1. The market has already sent this stock from 20 to 200. We're back to 150. But man, you talk about delivering on increased expectations. The Abercrombie and Hollister brands posted comp sales growth of 11 and 21% respectively. I'm not familiar with the Hollister brand. Whew. Yeah, remarkable, right? You're growing on compounded numbers that last year had 26% growth for Abercrombie and 7% for Hollister. And this time you're going to add to those with 11% for Abercrombie and 7% for Hollister. Just huge numbers, man. So Abercrombie's gone into wedding collection. Wedding collection. Recent partnership with the NFL. And the Hollister chain caters to Gen Z shoppers. Man, so you got Abercrombie's millennials and Hollister's Gen Z. Yeah, so the holiday season, man. Abercrombie, off to a good start. You jump over to Best Buy. They're a little bit lower on their numbers. There's your short-term time frame. Best Buy cuts their full-year sales forecast. So we'll talk a little bit of Best Buy when we get back. Softer demand for consumer electronics. The haves and the have-nots of retail. Take a look at Best Buy. Yeah, this thing, a meteoric rise during COVID, of course. Everybody's stocking up on electronics at home. And where are we? We're right back to where we were prior to COVID on Best Buy. $89. We'll talk some Best Buy. We'll talk some Amgen when we'll get back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up by 16 points. We jump over to Best Buy shares. So Best Buy down to 87.70 right now. You're going to open down almost, what, $6 on this equity from $93. And you jump over to Best Buy. The numbers for Best Buy out there, much different story from Abercrombie. Now, Abercrombie's got their own deal going on with those types of comp sales. But you're talking about to get over here. Best Buy cutting their full-year sales forecast due to softer demand for consumer electronics. Full-year comp sales are going to decline by 2.5 to 3.5 percent. They were prior looking at 1.5 to 3 percent. And yeah, when they talk about it, softer than expected demand. The CEO, Corey Barry, pinning that on a combination of outgoing macro uncertainty, excuse me, ongoing macro uncertainty, customers waiting for deals and sales events, and distraction during the run-up to the election, particularly in non-essential categories. Everyone was too distracted to be spending money they didn't need to spend at Best Buy. Think about that, right? First weeks of the quarter, consumer demand has picked up again as the holiday sales and season sales gain momentum election concerns ease the election was an all-encompassing event i get that but if your product is so hindered by the fact that we had an election going on maybe people don't need as many of your product as they think they need right we continue to see a consumer who's seeking value and sales events and one who is willing to spend on high price point products when they need to or when there is a new compelling technology. Thus, we are balancing our optimism in both the industry and our unique positioning with a pragmatic approach to likely uneven customer behavior going forward. You get two customers, the haves and have nots.
Weakness in sales of appliances, home theaters, and gaming contributed to the comp sales decline, but offset in part by growth of computing tablets and sales in the service category. You know, I have a couple items from Best Boy. I brought it into the Geek Squad there. When I have to access, I buy insurance, right? I bought insurance on a laptop recently, and I bought it on a Nintendo Switch, which I had to change out one of the controllers for. And it is remarkable how busy that Geek Squad is. And most of the time, they're in there servicing rather rudimentary technology problems for people who are unable to handle those technology problems themselves, whether it's setting up a phone, um, a computer, the like. They make a lot of money over some pretty simple things, but people need that help sometimes. Digital sales soft decreasing 1% year over year. That's a tough quarter, man. I read somewhere else in that article, I think I was reading another article about this, is that they're kind of waiting yeah, here it is. They're waiting for a wave of shoppers. This is, I mean, I know this is CNBC running this, but you, you correlate it all together. And it's a dicey report for Best Buy, man. Talking about, oh, the election had us having problems. People were too distracted to come spend money at Best Buy. They're waiting for a wave of shoppers to replace old devices and upgrade to new higher tech ones after an approximately two-year sales slump in the consumer electronics category. Yeah, everybody bought laptops, home theater systems, appliances during COVID. The pullback in discretionary purchases as Americans spent more on food and other necessities. And that's not going anywhere right now. It's not. You just saw tariffs coming out, okay? This is not going to change when you start tariff tariffs on Canada, Mexico, and extra tariffs on China. That is not going to give people the ability to start buying a ton of stuff because I'll tell you personally folks I don't need to upgrade what I got at Best Buy during COVID I set up a home office months before COVID I was fortunate on the timing and I'm not there yet yes we're four years out okay and yes we're now to the point where we upgrade our phone every three or four years but in many occasions you really don't need to be up in the ante as often when you're talking about whether it was a computer, some monitors, right? A home office, maybe a TV, maybe some appliances in the kitchen. They're discretionary purchases. At a time when everybody's going to Walmart to save money, that's a problem. Sam's, you know my affinity for Sam's. Sam's has televisions, folks. They have technology, okay? Sam's is making a change to start servicing bigger ticket items and you can get them delivered. What did I talk about last week? Last week I talked about Tommy wants a Nintendo Switch game. We were playing it at Target. So I think I'll get him a Nintendo Switch game for Christmas. And when I started looking for that Nintendo Switch game, which Best Buy sells many of, okay, who was the one who offered it the cheapest? Walmart. Nah, not GameStop. I was thinking, you know what? I can get this used maybe if I want. He doesn't need a new Nintendo Switch game. I can get it used. No. No. Walmart's price on a new video game was cheaper than GameStop's used price. Think about that, right? So, look at that run on GameStop we got going. From 10 bucks, just in the last month, you've gone from 20 to $30 for GameStop. And nonetheless, we know I love Walmart, and Walmart, yeah. Makes an all-time high yesterday at 90.82. We're trading right now basically flat at 89.45 for Walmart. All right, Amgen. Now, you look at this, excuse me, headline, and you think the stock's going to go to the moon. You talk about expectations. Amgen, down by about $35, man. You take a look at a weekly on this thing. You're going to open at about 260, which is the lows of earlier this year. You break below that, you're probably going to 220. Now, the headline, obesity drug caused up to 20% weight loss after a year with no plateau. Yeah, no plateau, which indicates the potential for further weight loss beyond the 52 weeks. Maritide may measure up to blockbuster weight loss injections from Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly. These GLP drugs, 
It also helped patients with obesity and type 2 diabetes lose up to 17% of their weight. The results appear to be at the lower end of what Wall Street was looking for. Imagine that. Whew. Several analysts said they wanted Maritide to show at least 20%, with some hoping for 25%. I wonder what the, the weights of these people, and I know they're severely obese. I don't know that. I, I, if you're talking about somebody who's at you know, 300 pounds, you're losing 60 pounds. You're talking about somebody at 200 pounds, you're losing 40 pounds. You're talking about somebody who weighed 250 taking 50 pounds off I I have to check it myself big numbers 20% nonetheless expectations are everything Amgen going to open down 10% on those numbers All right, folks stay tuned we're coming back for the opening bell the market going to digest some tariffs news S&P's up by 11 we'll be right back folks the consistency you're looking for is closer than you think one or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We jump over to the market. s and is up by 12. A little bit of a give back coming into the opening bell there in the last 15 minutes. You get the Dow off by 104 right now. Russell off by 15, trending down six tenths percent. We take our eyes and put them on yields right now. We got a little bit of lower price and higher yields coming at you with the 10-year still sitting, though, at 4.3 percent right now. And yeah, we jump over to some of the equities of the news. You got Amgen down almost 10 percent. 
on their news, not living up to expectations for their weight loss drug. Jump over to Best Buy shares, down about 6.6%. And we jump over to Dick's Sporting Goods out with their numbers and a little bit of a give back. Robust holiday guidance is what the headline has here. We'll pull it up for Dick's as we got a big morning of retail earnings coming into Thanksgiving week. Now, it's interesting that you got one less week, right? I got to go out and get a tree. We got to get ready because it seems like, you know, I used to always go out on the Friday after Thanksgiving. Well, that's a week later this time, just like that. Um, but nonetheless, Dick's. How about same-store sales growth of almost 4%, 3.6 to 4.2, up from a previous range of 2.5 to 3.5. The market was looking for about 3.4, and they come in with 3.6 to 4.2. Earnings, they beat 275 versus 268, and revenue, they beat as well with 3.06 billion. Yeah, comp sales, 4.2% growth there. Robust back-to-school shopping. Yeah, 4.2, well ahead of the 2.7 that the market was looking for. And they're looking for sales for the fiscal year, 13.2 to 13.3 billion. The estimate was 13.26, so right in line. But guess what? Right in line, and they give it back. We're up by 2.6%. You take a look at Dix, just been consolidating all year. 220 is the upside here. You see bumping up against that area of resistance. The lower portion, about 190 for Dix, back it up even further than that. And you talk about it, man. One of the companies that pivoted so well during COVID. I remember telling the stories, I needed to buy a pair of shoes. And I pulled up and bought a pair of sneakers <clears throat> and I had never had an experience like it before as early during COVID. And you could pick it up right at your car window, just like a, an Outback Steakhouse meal, where you arrive and you drive there, you park in the spot, they would delivering me sneakers. Now, yes, that seems common nowadays. That was not common in the beginning of 2020 that you could pick something up, sit in your car and have them drop it, drop it off. All right, we jump around to some of the airlines. I found this article interesting. You get Delta up by about 2% right now. Up a dollar twenty-four at sixty-five seventy-three. These things have been on a tear. You can't help start looking at them. Look at this. United up by four point four percent. Look at these accelerations, man. My goodness. American up two tenths. Jet blue. I was gonna, I was waiting for it, man. No, no matter how. Well, the airlines are doing. It seems like I pull up JetBlue and they're always in the red. JetBlue down by 2.6% today, under $6. Yeah, stay away from JetBlue. Stay away from maybe these other airlines with the move they're in. You look at Delta, right? Delta just completed a one-to-one -one move in terms of the move you had from the end of 2023. You trade higher, you pull back, and you do it again, and we're above that area. Delta up another 2%. Now, I bring this up because the Senate, all right, Slams Airlines for raking in billions in seed fees. Now, we talked about this recent, um, recently where we had the CEO, I think it might have been Delta, coming out and saying that he's looking forward to the next administration that's more pro-growth, right? And that's because the Biden administration has, has vowed greater scrutiny of what it considers junk fees from the airlines, hotels, and other companies. How about $12.4 billion is what? American Delta United Frontier and Spirit brought in in fees over five years. Whew. Now, you want to put that in some context? How about this for some context? During those years, you had these airlines taking funding from American taxpayers to the tune of billions of dollars just to stay alive. So that's where things get murky, you know? Airlines would be just fine making sure, yeah, for what it's worth. It's a big number, man. $12.4 billion in seating fees. Pay attention to this one as you're going to look to do away with all of that in the next administration. Um, yeah, ticket change fees, et cetera. Now you're supposed to be refunded immediately when they cancel a flight. Yeah, you have a group out there pushing back. All right. 
$12.4 billion over a five-year period that encompasses getting all that money from taxpayers, which is the kicker of it all. As you go back to this chart, and that's when they were asking for taxpayer funding. And so keep that in mind as they come for those fees, as we are now back to above where you were prior to COVID with Delta pushing $65 this morning. You jump over to United on a longer term basis. Look at United, man. Look at these runs. Oh, the fees are coming, folks, and they don't have to come. All right. The fees don't have to go from our our pockets to these companies when you think about the tax part of money that went to these companies over that time, look at the run that these things have knowing they're going to get to exploit what's going on right now. Up another 4.4% for United, man. And American, yeah, not quite the same scenario for American. They came into COVID at about $31. You're trading at 14 But boy, you talk about Delta and United, right? Is that an all-time high? It might be. United, similar story. All right, we check out what else we have going on. So, Coles. Yeah, let's talk about this one. The haves and have-nots we talked about. Yeah, how about the have-nots today, man? This thing had traded a little bit higher following their pullback on target numbers, but watch out for Coles. Looks like the lines aren't doing enough in Coles. <clears throat> 20 cents a share on 3.51 billion. The market was looking for 28 cents a share on 3.64 billion. So much for low expectations. As they miss expectations, you're down by 20%. And yeah, this chart is ugly. Ugly with a capital U. As you are back to prices that you were trading at in July of 1997. My goodness. Look at that run. Looks like maybe five bucks will be out there. Whew. You know, you think about it. You got Dick's doing pretty well, right? You got the likes of TJ Maxx doing well. Cole's in a bad spot. Down 21% and not stopping there. All right, we talk about Zoom as well. Zoom down by 7.5% right now, but we jump over to the dollar. And folks, we're going to be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat. Perfect day to have him on. We'll talk some currencies. We'll talk some yields. You get the dollar right now up 32 pennies at 106.90. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee.
So, ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have S&Ps up by 11 right now. And shame on me. I thought it was Wednesday. This week is flying. No, it's Tuesday. We have our man Teddy on Wednesdays at 40 past the hour. So that's a perfect uh, segue to say tomorrow, 24 hours from right now, Teddy will be on the air. So check that out. And yeah, not doing so good. Pretty remarkable. Colas continues to drop down by 19% on those numbers, man. You talk about a drop off. And yeah, you open, you got all the way up to 1550. We're back to 1483 right now. You jump around some of the other equities, Amgen on their weight loss drug down by 11%. You jump over to Best Buy. Uh, yeah, down by 8.6. They give it all back and they're making lows for Best Buy shares down by $8. Yeah, Best Buy. I agree. That whole conference call, right? The fact that people were too distracted with the election to go spend money on things that they didn't need at Best Buy. That's that's how I interpreted that uh, that conference call, uh, earnings call. And you take a look at a longer term chart of this thing. You're right back where you were prior to COVID. And meanwhile, it's going to take time for people to stock up. And then you have the competition coming from the likes of Walmart. Yeah, among many others. Uh, and Abercrombie Fitch saying, what else are we talking about? Yeah, look at that. They give it up as well. It's a tough go around right now. Expectations sky high. They came into the opening bell at almost 164. And just like that, you're trading at 147, down by 4.6%. They said they had some good numbers over there for Abercrombie and Fitch. We jump over to Gap. They had some good numbers earlier. Last week, was it? Or this week? Yeah, last week, gap up by about one-tenth percent. We jump around to the Magnificent Seven, Apple shares. They're pushing almost all-time highs right now for Apple at 234. You're up by seven-tenths percent. We jump over to Microsoft, up a percentage point. Amazon up 1.8 percent. They had a nice run yesterday, continuing that run today. Up by 1.8 percent for Amazon. We jump over to Google shares, slightly in the green by seven-tenths. Meta this morning, up by seven tenths as well. And they jump over to Tesla, up by six tenths percent, sitting at $340. And yeah, if Tesla could just chop around at $340, not bad. You're talking about right now, yeah, $1.1 trillion, we'll call it. $1.1 trillion at $341 for Tesla shares. And we got to talk a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of a pullback. But you want to say, what can this market do? Let's just look where a 3A2 pullback is of the run that began on November 4th. 3A2 brings you down to 87,000. And that would be almost the highs of that big bar on November 11th. Right? You had the election bar, took you from 70,000 to 76. And then you had the day, November 11th, we accelerated near 90,000. You're back to 93.3. Now you talk about MicroStrategy, down by 2.5%. And let me find this one. Here it is. Okay. A hundred and thirty-four thousand bitcoins 
are what they've purchased in this month. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it sure is. So they just acquired another $3 billion convertible note issue and common share sale. And they've acquired 55,000 tokens from November 18th to November 24th. The reason why I keep putting, pointing this out, and you saw the acceleration, folks. I was pointing it out, and this is great if you love volatility and you got quick fingers, okay? But I was talking about it on this run-up because what happened was is that they started talking about that he's still buying Bitcoin. And so there's, there's no price rationale. He has one move, and his move is to use this public company as a vehicle to leverage Bitcoin at all times. He's not going to be a trader that says, you know what, I was buying Bitcoin, but now it's at 100000 and I'm going to try and maybe hedge some of it. No, that's not what he's doing. He is constantly leveraging things up. And boy, that is a recipe for extreme volatility when you think about using that value over and over to ratchet up your leverage. And here you see it happen yet again. So a $3 billion convertible note, they acquire 55,000 tokens. I mean, look at, look at this chart. This blows me away. November, now the Trump administration's coming in, all right? You just got an acceleration to the likes we've really never seen before in Bitcoin. But folks, I'm gonna put this on a monthly chart, okay? And I'm gonna look at this year. Now take that off. And I'm gonna tell you, here's what a chart of Bitcoin looks like. Now, what would you say to an investor or a trader that says, this is what Bitcoin looks like. And guess what? From the month of November, this is how many Bitcoin I bought this month when this is how much I bought going back to February. They'd say, wait a second. You weren't buying it when it was chopping around between 60 and 70,000. You're only now buying it as it's, as it's accelerated from 70 to 100,000. What happens if you get a pullback? The leverage that could implode on that one is remarkable, okay? Now, they're announcing a plan to raise some 42 billion in capital, but this company right now, folks, you're talking about, where are we? Oh, I think we're pushing 100 billion. You're a Fortune 100 company. 89 billion is where you're at right now. You were above that. Look at the run up you had back here. Yeah, be careful of micro strategy, okay? When you see, I mean, Think about it. If you ever saw a trader like this and says, this is how I'm trading Bitcoin. These are my buys. They'd say, oh, my God, you're loading up on Bitcoin when it's at 100,000. What if you get an extreme pullback? Yeah. So they have almost 400,000 Bitcoin since 2020. Their average price is 60,000. On the long run, that's probably great. But on the short run, we were just at 60,000 almost a month ago. That means if it goes to 60,000, basically the company is, gets wiped out. Yeah. You got a financial arbitrage, okay, in the corporate structure, capital structure of a corporate treasury. Like a... He's created the ability to borrow essentially for free. And they say that because the note he just put out is zero interest, okay? After initially funding the purchases with corporate cash, everybody is just leveraging Bitcoin at 100,000. You better be careful, okay, if you're looking for it. He sells convertible debt and additional shares. Lenders accepted a 0% interest rate on the latest convertible issue on a bet that the shares are gonna be more valuable in the future than the conversion price. So even the people lending the money are basically leveraged to higher prices in Bitcoin. Not a bad business plan though, when you can put out notes at 0% and become a Bitcoin treasury. And in the long run, yeah, Bitcoin's going nowhere. In the short run, folks, if you're listening to this program, you know how things can work in the short run when it comes to volatility. So protect yourself if you're using MicroStrategy. S&P's up by 19. We got one more segment. We'll be right back, folks. 
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets pretty much holding where we kick things off. You get the S&Ps chopping around within five points of where we opened. You're up by 15 right now at 6,021. NASDAQ 100, we're up by about 100 points. We walk through some of the Magnificent Seven, and you take a look. This was an interesting piece. Now, this is an opinion piece from Bloomberg, okay, from Jonathan Levin. Magnificent Seven are beginning to look average. The one thing I just wanted to pull up, I was reading this this morning. When you take a look at... Okay, the Magnificent Seven year-over-year -year earnings growth is in blue here. We had some mammoth numbers coming in, but where are we expected to grow? go in the future? We're supposed to go basically where everything else is. As in, you have black here, earnings growth for all the other companies besides the Magnificent Seven. You can see, stagnant. And then when you go into 2025 and 2026, though, what do you have? You have the Magnificent Seven going back from this stratospheric 54% earnings growth when you really got an acceleration. Now, what did happen, okay, the reason why this number is so high was because it was so bad in 2022 and 2023. Remember, Zuckerberg was spending all the money on AI, right? All these tech companies were spending too much. They had to trim the fat to a certain degree. Amazon, Meta. So you had a 
earnings growth that was dramatic because you were taking a hit on earnings in late 2022. But still, look at the expectation for earnings to grow from all the other companies besides the Magnificent Seven. That's your orange line here. And then look at the gray line of where the Magnificent Seven is going to be. By September of 2025, those lines are going to converge. So look for a potentially a rotation. Keep your spikes up. We've all seen the Russell 2000, right? Have quite a dramatic return. And we'll see if that trend holds. All right, folks, thanks so much for kicking off your Tuesday right here at TFNN with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Our man Steve Rhodes with the Trader's Edge. Fast market at 12. We got our man... Larry Pesavento at 1, and we got a man Jacob Shoop after that. Folks, stay tuned. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a great one.